evolution, 150 years ago, Darwin introduced us to this concept. And today I'm going to take you through a very brief story about the evolution of voice, something all of us do every single day. But very, very powerful. We say, I love you. We say, we're going to get a divorce. We say, I miss you. We say, I hate you. The spoken word is amazingly powerful. How can we restore the power of voice? It's been taken away from us. We've lost it over the last few years. How do we lose it over the last few years? Evolution has taught us that we can communicate from one person to another in a very powerful means, and that is through the spoken word. If we go back in time, see a very pretty diagram here of our, our ancient ancestors. Many, many years ago, body language and voice was the only way to communicate. As we've gone through time, what's changed? What's changed in how we communicate and in our body language? And how has technology changed the way we can be and share our lives with other people? Language developed very, very quickly. Many, many different dialects. Globalization, we say today, threatens all of that. Question mark. I don't believe it does. New lands, new spaces, new environments. And Alexander Graham Bell gave us a very powerful tool. It's a tool of a fixed phone. Fixed telephony allowed us to share our voice and our message from one person to another in far reaches and very, very distant terms. The voice had no boundary. Some of us in this room will remember this day and this time. As technology advances, our voice appears to be smaller and smaller. We struggle with communicating a clear message from one person to another. Keep in mind, this takes you back to a time when mobile telephony was not, al was not alive. In 1987, we found the birth of voicemail. Voice could be captured. It was captured and it was stored on dumb boxes. Everyone in the room who hates voicemail? As it was stored on dumb boxes, our voice was taken away from us. The moment we speak is an emotional moment. It's a shared moment. It's a moment that reflects who we are and what we think. Storing it on a dumb box does not reflect that moment very well. In the 90s, the web, email, SMS even, we don't speak anymore. We don't talk to each other. We text each other. We email each other. What's happened to our emotions? What's happened to how we communicate? We're forced to use our fingers to tell a story. How many of us type, delete, and type again every day? How many of us send a text and delete and send it again? It isn't a true experience of humanity. So 2003 founded a small business called Spinvox. Spinvox for the very first time unleashed voice. How do we unleash voice? By converting it into text. In that moment, in that space. And Spinvox does set your voice free. Because the moment your spoken word is converted into text, it is memorialized. So Spinvox welcomes a new dawn of communication, not only mobile telephony, but in understanding voice and in setting our voices free, in stimulating society to speak freely. Our recent presidential elections are an awesome representation of speaking freely. Imagine how many voices could have been caught and memorialized. As time evolves, imagine what else you could do with this. Today we convert voice messages and voicemail into text. And tomorrow, those millions and millions of people using mobile phones throughout the world can send us messages. Equality between giver and receiver, sharing of stories, memorializing events that happen in our own personal lives, and in the evolution of society. I think converting voice into text is the new future for communication. Thank you.